Why is it so hard to test whether drivers are stoned? Next on Men Are So Smart. Enforcement officials would love to have a clear way to tell when a driver is too drugged to drive, but the decades of experience the country has in setting limits for alcohol have turned out to be rather useless so far because the mind-altering compound in cannabis, THC, dissolves in fat, whereas alcohol dissolves in water. And that changes everything. It's really difficult to document drug driving in relevant way because of the simple fact that THC is fat soluble. Hmm. That makes it absorbed in a very different way and much more difficult to relate behavior to say blood alcohol levels of THC or to, to develop a breathalyzer. Interesting. Yeah. When you drink, alcohol spreads through your saliva and breath. It eventually and evenly saturates your lungs and blood. Measuring the volume of alcohol in one part of your body can predictably tell how much is in any other part of your body, like how much is affecting your brain at any given time. Now that made it possible to do the science on alcohol and crash risk back in the mid 20th century. Eventually, decades of study helped formulate that the 08 blood alcohol limit as too drunk to drive. And if you remember a long time ago, when we first started driving, it was actually 1.0. Yeah, that's right. Point here in, Sac in California. The 08 standard in alcohol is from decades of careful research, says a researcher from the University of California, Berkeley. Now, because THC is fat soluble, it moves readily from water environments like blood to fatty environments. Fatty tissues act like sponges for the THC, and the brain is a very fatty tissue. It's been proven you can still measure THC in the brain even if it's no longer measurable in the blood. Hmm. So maybe they'll have to start taking a brain sample. <laughs> or, <laughs> Good luck finding mine. Yeah. Uh, and if you eat the weed instead of smoking it, mm -hmm. your blood never carries that much THC. With oral THC, it takes several hours of blood to peak but it remains very low compared to the smoke drought, even though they're very high. It's a hundredfold difference. Check it out. Daily users are different. Heavy smokers build up so much THC in their body fat that it could continue leaching out for weeks after they last smoked. Now here's where it gets important. These chronic frequent users will also experience a rapid loss of THC from their blood after smoking, but they will also have a constant, moderate level of blood THC, even when they're not high. The attitude difference between stone drivers and alcohol drivers seems clear. Pot smokers tend to be more aware they're impaired than alcohol users. Mm. Drunk drivers are more aggressive. High drivers are slower. <laughs> Do you, do you see that as an officer? I don't even look at it typically from that point, because a lot of times... People that have been drinking, they drive slower anyway. Oh, okay. Driving is a multi-faceted, there are many different skill levels involved at the same time, and you can't do them all at once. Mm -hmm. And so they may be maintaining their lane, their headlights are on, but they're only going 30 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So there's a lot of that. In states like Washington, if a driver is found to have over five nanograms of THC per milliliter in their blood, they automatically get a DUI cannabis. If we're going to criminalize DUI marijuana, we need to take information from scientific studies and use it to decide if that risk is sufficiently high to be so morally blameworthy that we call it a crime, but we don't. So picking five nanograms per milliliter is nothing more than arbitrary. Yeah, it's kind of a starting point. Mm -hmm. The complicated biology of THC makes current DUI cases very tricky. Blood isn't taken in the US until about an hour and a half to four hours after the traffic incident. 
by then THC levels would have fallen significantly and these people might have been impaired but passed the test. At the same time, a heavy uh, user living in a state like Washington would get a DUI even if she hadn't smoked in weeks. Wow. Mm. Crazy. So what we're saying here is that usually after an hour and a half or so of a person smoking marijuana who doesn't smoke it on a regular basis, it will have passed through their bloodstream. Yes. Whereas alcohol, after you have your last drink, you actually are continuing to go up and then you kind of level off and then it starts to dissipate. They're different. Your body processes them differently. And I think they're going to have to come up with some refinements to the test before it's largely accepted. Now, there was a case recently where a driver was in a collision, was found to be under the influence of cannabis. But as it turns out, it had been over five to seven days since the person last smoked it. There's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, it doesn't seem like it might happen that often, but in states where marijuana is legal, someone could get a DUI when they haven't smoked weed for over a week. Yeah. And that don't seem right. No. That's, there, there is a lot more work that needs to be done on this. And by the same token, the drunk driving alcohol-related uh, laws weren't perfect right out of the box either. A lot of refinement that goes along with it and change and the ways that they test. You know, they would used to be able to test with blood, breath, and or urine. So they prefer not to use urine anymore. Yeah, it's messy. Yeah, it's messy. Breathalyzer might actually give you a little bit of a higher reading than typical. And blood is just a really, it's the industry standard. Okay, so, so let me let me give you a, a hypothetical situation. Um, you pull over a car, and as you come up to the window and the window is rolled down, you do smell marijuana coming from the car, but nothing is visible. Um, you suspect that the driver has been smoking while driving. What is the procedure? Like I said, it's, it's going to be the same thing as alcohol. If you have a suspicion they're driving while intoxicated or while under the influence, you can perform some, you know, Field roadside, some roadside tests and okay. see how they perform. I don't know that marijuana use is going to impact your motor skills the same way that uh, alcohol driving would. And we don't do a lot of testing for DUI. I work day shift, and so yeah, yeah. But what would a CHP officer give a, a, a breathalyzer? Well, they don't really have a breathalyzer right. for marijuana, so they do have a, a device that's called a PAS. It's preliminary alcohol screening. It works for alcohol, and it works very well. It's one way to say, hey, I have not been drinking. My, Yeah, I was looking at the floor, changing radio stations. I was weaving in my lane. I get it. If you just want to be proven innocent very quickly, you blow in the PAS, you blow a zero, zero, zero. CHP says... You're on your way. Yeah, be on your way. So it is one way to get in and out of a drunk driving ticket rapidly. Not uh, not sure that that's ever going to be the case with marijuana. Uh, it doesn't sound like it's going to be as simple to test. So I think it's going to be much more challenging. Well, California has passed uh, marijuana in a medicinally in a medicinal way. Uh, so these and problems recreationally in 18, I believe in 2018. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so we're seeing this pretty widespread throughout the country at this point. Yeah. Some States I think are, uh, tend to be a little more conservative and I think they may be more hesitant. Um, but you're going to start seeing more and more of the States passing the laws. So something has got to be done. Unless we determine that marijuana does not have an influence on your driver driving, um, there's going to have to be some sort of scientific way of determining. Yeah, and it's not there yet, and it it's it's coming now after the legalization in many states. Right, when that's really like putting the cart before the horse, don't you think? 
Yeah. Then, well, and it's a, it's a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction. Uh, and unfortunately, Colorado, who has had legalized marijuana use for over a year, mm. they are seeing an increase in marijuana-related vehicle accidents. It does have an impact, and maybe it slows their ability to brake rapidly. I, I'm not sure. And I think a lot of the stuff is, if you're driving straight down the road and there's nobody else on the road with you, you're probably fine. Yeah. But as soon as you throw other cars into the mix that sometimes do crazy things, yesterday when we were driving out of here, Vicky and I could have been in two different car accidents, you know, had she not been driving defensively. Mm -hmm. Cell phones, I think, are the the main culprit. But people just drive like they're only they're the only ones on the road. When you throw those other cars into the mix, then your driving skills have to be up to snuff. And if they're off just a little bit, there's no way to avoid that accident, and they're going to happen. Well, there you have it: uh, the straight on driving while under the influence of marijuana, cannabis uh, versus uh, alcohol. Um, we don't have all the answers, but we're bringing you the information as we uh, get it and sharing it with you. Um, knowledge is power, I suppose. <laughs> so that'll bring us to the conclusion of another episode. If you enjoyed the show, found it informational, please click the like, the thumbs up button that you'll see uh, down below the screen. Uh, if you enjoy our show on a regular basis, we'd love to have you as a subscriber. And that button will pop up in just a moment that you can click and, and link to our page. Uh, we are on the Gallagher Entertainment Network. The show is called Men Are So Smart. We have two sponsors, Trico Welding Supplies of Woodland and Sacramento, and our folks at uh, Capital Mobile Break, who have an offer going on right now. And uh, be sure and look below. You can save $30 on a front or back brake job when you supply the pads and rotors. That's going to do it for us. This has been another episode of Men Are So Smart. We'll see you next time. Wave to the crowd, Ronnie. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.